hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, get the Lord some hand praise in here. Oh, come on, it's not for me, it's for Jesus. Get the Lord a hand praise in here. Praise God for who He is. Praise God for waking you up on this morning. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Come on, you can do better than that. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Yes, 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 yes. God is so faithful. Thank you for being so faithful. I'm going to open with a word of prayer, and we're going to get into our service. But I want to share a couple things with you first. We weren't here. Pastor Karen and I weren't here last Sunday. We are away celebrating 36 years of marriage. Amen. Amen. I praise God for a faithful bride, a beautiful bride, a smart bride, a partner in the ministry. So praise God for longevity. Keep us lifted up in prayer. Amen. I also want to thank all the men who went out to the men's conference, the Lifeway Church, Ransom Cucamonga, Friday and Saturday. Fantastic time. Men of God, put your hand up. All the men. If you got to get permission from your wife to raise your hand and see me after service. All the men, put your hand up. Come on, look at all these faithful men in this church. Come on now. Men of God, I'm praying for you. God has his hand on you. We need to fellowship together and do life together. Amen? Finally, before I pray, I want you to keep Michael Hickman lifted up in prayer. Two weeks ago, a, we assume a drunk driver ran a red light and ran into her car, and she's been in the hospital ever since. Broken bones, tubes, young lady, worked in our youth ministry here at Crossword. So I want you to keep Michael Hickman lifted up in prayer, her mother Monique lifted up in prayer, her father Joey lifted up in prayer, Minister Max and I Pastor, youth pastor, Max and I have been back and forth to the hospital, but keep her lifted up in prayer. She's not out of the woods yet. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we praise you. We honor you. We thank you, Father, for the breath of life. Somebody laid down last night and they did not wake up. So, Father, we thank you for allowing us to breathe your air yet another day. Now, Father, I ask right now that you will purge us all. Allow us to reflect on what you have done and will continue to do through each of us. Father, we are your servants. Elevate us as we elevate you. Father, I pray for each person in this place. I pray for those who are watching online. Let them know that you're not done with them. We thank you for the anointing in this house. We thank you for those who serve, those who sing, those who are going up and beyond what you have called them to do to make sure everybody knows Jesus. Now, Father... We thank you for the word that went forth last week. We thank you for the word that will go forth this week. I lift Pastor Ricky to you right now. I pray that you continue to anoint him, soften his heart, Father. Give him your words to minister to us on this Sunday. Father God, we adore you. We thank you for allowing us to serve you. We thank you for allowing us to be about your business. Now, Father, join us in this place. Do what only you can do as we continue to move forward in the center of your will. Bless us all. It's in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Love you all. Hallelujah. Good morning, Crossword. Come on, let's lift up our worship. Don't we serve a mighty God, an awesome God, who's worthy of all the glory, honor, and praise. We worship you, Jesus. Anybody come to worship him? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes his boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, magnify the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name. Let us exalt his name. Fresh wind, fresh wind, fresh wind, fresh wind flow in this place. Fresh wind flow in this place. Fresh wind flow in this place. Come on, worshiper, lift them up. We worship you, God. We worship you, God. We adore your holy name. You're worthy. You're worthy. Baptize us in the Holy Spirit. Baptize us in the Holy Spirit. Fresh wind, fresh wind, yeah. You're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy, God. Come on, let's worship Him. It's when we come. 
parents who have sent us information on your graduating high school seniors. We know there's many more that are graduating, so we would like to hear about it so we could recognize your graduate and celebrate their accomplishments with you. Send your information on your student to admin at crosswordchurch.org. Just include their name, high school, list of accomplishments, and whatever their plans are for the future, whether it's furthering their education, trade school, or even military service. We thank you in advance for sending this information to us. The Winston Women's Ministry has begun a new study. This week, we launch week three of Elijah Faith and Fire by Priscilla Shire. Join us online via Zoom every Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. or in person on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. in the court building. This is a sisterhood designed to help you grow deeper in your faith and in relationship with other Christian women. All you have to do is email winsome at crosswordchurch.org to receive the Zoom link. And speaking of women, May 8th, 2022. What day is it, family? It's Mother's Day. To honor and celebrate motherhood, we have arranged for you to take a free photo of you and your mom, and you'll take it home the same day. Don't miss this opportunity to show mom just how much you love her and to make new memories. Hey fam, you know what's going on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Better Ask Sykes a deeper dive every Wednesday at 7 p.m. in person at the main campus, online at crosswordchurch.tv or on Crossword Church's Facebook page. Relevant questions are welcome, so join us and grow your faith week by week. Again, that's every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Giving at Crossword Church is easy. Just download the church app available on iOS and Android. Tithe and offerings can also be placed in the boxes conveniently located at the exits in each the sanctuary and the lobby of each campus. See, when giving in person, remember to please completely fill out the envelope before placing it in the box. This helps our staff correctly apply your gift to your giving statement. 
Just print your name legibly on the envelope because there's many people in this church that have your first initial and last name. We thank you in advance for generously giving as we reach others for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And lastly, just like Jesus, we want to grow in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and man. Crossword Christian Church is a great place to be planted and to grow. Becoming a member is easy. So just go to crosswordchurch.tv, click on the Become a Member tab, and complete the information. From there, we look forward to welcoming you into this family. Make it a great day, Crossword. I'll see you next time. Hallelujah. What's the greatest name of all? What's the greatest name of all? Come on and shout his name. What's the greatest name of all? We come to lift that name today. Hallelujah. We come to lift that name. What a privilege and honor it is to bless his name. What a privilege and honor it is to be in his throne, to be before his throne room. Come on, put your hands together like this. Your name is something we cannot. Let me hear you sing it out. Say, when we, your great name, your great name, say, we, we love to call your name. Call your name. It's something we cannot, we cannot explain. That happened when we broke when we broke your name. Great
in the room. Jesus just walked in the room. He just walked in the room. Yes, he did. How will you respond to his presence? He just walked in the room. I felt him when he opened the door and came through. If we worship his name, I'm sure he will stay in the room. He's in, in the room. Jesus just walked in the room. I felt him when he opened the door and came through. If we worship his name, I'm sure he will stay. I'm sure he will stay in the room. He's in, in the room. Me not, oh gentle Savior, hear my humble cry while on others thou art calling. Calling, 
for loving us thank you for comforting us thank you for not leaving us
You're the potter and I'm the clay. You're the potter and I'm the clay. Shape me, Jesus. Make me, Jesus. Break me. You're the potter and I'm the clay. You're the potter and I'm the clay, yes. You're the potter and I'm the clay, God. Shake me, break me, and mold me to make me what you want me to be. It's who I am, 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 I am yours. <laughs> yeah, I claim it. I am yours. I am yours. I came to make the enemy mad. I am yours. Yeah, yeah. I am yours. I belong to you. I call you Abba. I call you Abba. with tubes and stuff in us. Hallelujah. Some of us, the, the car was running on fumes, but hallelujah. Didn't have a job, but hallelujah. Your marriage is on the rocks, but hallelujah. A child at home acting up, but hallelujah. Our God has been good to us, and he's worthy to be praised. Praise God, somebody in here. If you're at home, praise him in your living room. He's worthy to be praised. He's given us his awesome, awesome grace through his son, Jesus Christ. And we thank him for this day. It is an honor and a privilege to stand before you this morning just to bring the word. I thank God for allowing me just to be able to do this. I thank Bishop, our pastor of this house to even ask me. God has been good, and we definitely have a word today, and I hope that we will all be in tune. But before we get into it, let us go to the throne of grace. Oh, Heavenly Father, first off, we just want to say thank you, oh God. 
We thank you for this day, oh God. We ask that you just be with us all. You've already woken us up this morning and allowed us to come into this place to worship you, oh God. Lord, we ask that you just stand with us as the word is being brought, oh God. You've already given it to me, oh God. You've been a blessing to me over this past week and just looking and searching into your undeniable, remarkable, marvelous word, oh God. Lord, I ask that you allow me just to speak to your people, to be your conduit, your vessel, that you would use my mouth, my voice, to say what needs to be said to your people, that we all may grow in your grace, oh God. Lord, we thank you for this day, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Again, it is a blessing to be here this morning. I hope that we are ready to hear something from God. He has already spoke to me, as I said. And this was not an easy word or subject to deal with because it got all up in my business. So guess what? I'm getting in your business. God is good. So our subject this morning is our spiritual mode of operation. Uh, two verses that we have on the outline, but we're actually dealing with four verses in Titus 2, verses 11 through 14. And I ask that you would read 11 and 12 with me. And it reads, For the remarkable, undeserved grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. It teaches us to reject ungodliness and worldly, immoral desires and to live sensibly, upright, and godly lives with a purpose this age. Amen. You may be seated. Our spiritual mode of operation, our MO, how we do things. It is, in essence, how we are in church culture, whether it be here in the house of God or in our house at home, how you do things on a regular basis. And there's something that I want to talk about that goes along with all this because there's a notion that has been floating about within Christendom, within the body of Christ, that is a false narrative. I, have relig I don't have religion. I have a relationship with God. From the very t first time I heard that concept, I did not agree with it because my religion dictates my relationship with God. Many of us may have said it. Maybe someone here in this room may have said it themselves, but yet we're, 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 we're taking in something that is not of God because Scripture says something different. This whole concept of religion, it just means something that you do over and over and over. We are told to love everybody, not just one time. Love is our religion. It's something that we do all the time. Every last one of us are religious to a certain point on any and everything. We have the same routine every time we get up in the morning, right? I get up out of the left side of my bed, put both feet on the floor, and I'm like, why is this alarm going off? I hate that alarm. I get up after I hit that alarm to go off, I go brush my teeth, do all the, it's the same routine every day, religion. And we have a false concept within the church right now because many and far too many people are saying, I don't have religion, I have a relationship. And we're going to point out some things why that is a false narrative. Our spiritual mode of operation. We have to, to get within our our own minds sometimes just to see where we are. And again, this, this word religion seems to be a, a bad word. But this word religion, as I, I, I studied it, there's a couple of different words in Scripture that make reference to religion. One is faith. That's one that makes reference to re religion. Another one is godliness. That also makes reference to religion. Now, if we use those words, when somebody gets to popping off at the mouth tomorrow, I don't have no religion, oh, I got a relation, just use the word faith and godliness. That's going to cause one to start to think. What do you believe and act on? What do you believe within yourself that comes from Scripture that you use each and every day that you live on and by to carry on your life, your mode of operation? 
Do you have godliness? A certain standard in which you keep no matter what, your mode of operation. No matter what's going on in your life, there ought to be a, a voluntary conscious act that shows of your spiritual relationship with God, that expresses in itself in your whole life, not just when you come to church. That's our religion, our spiritual mode of operation. We have to know and understand what Scripture tells us, and this is why I wanted to use this portion of Scripture. In verses 13 and 14, which we, we don't have on our, our uh, outline, here's, here's what it says. It says, awaiting and confidently expecting the fulfillment of our blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus. And 14, it says, who willingly gave himself to be crucified on our behalf to redeem us and purchase our freedom from all wickedness and to purify for himself a chosen and very special people to be his own possession who are enthusiastic for doing what is good. That's word. God wants us to be very special to him. And we can't say we, we are special to him if we aren't doing those special things that are according to his word and that we walk in them, live in them, and do our thing by them. Our spiritual mode of operation. One of the very first words that kind of stood out to me in my study as I'm reading this and going back to verse 11 as it reads, for the remarkable undeserved grace of God that bring salvation has appeared. Sometimes we'll gloss over words like appeared. This word appeared in the Greek means epiphano. That word sounds very familiar, doesn't it? Epiphany. Epiphano. This word in itself means to shine or illuminate. The gospel which Jesus Christ has brought to us through his life, his, his death, burial, and resurrection has risen like the sun has rise, like the light went off for all of humanity. It has shined God on us that we would have exactly what we need. Sometimes we, we think that we come up with an idea. I had an epiphany. Bing. Not knowing God probably put it there. But this is what the gospel has brought to all of humanity. It didn't just show up. No, it shines a light on darkness. This is what God has done for us through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this word uh, in itself means this, to appear and to achieve a fitting purpose as it builds on a particular situation. The situation was he had to get us up out of sin. Epiphany, or, or epiphano, shining like the sun rises every day. God has a particular reason, just like the sun rises and gives us light and heat, the gospel should do something for us. To illuminate us and give us something that we cannot get on our own. If this, if this planet did not have the sun, we'd freeze over. And without the word for those individuals that say that I don't have religion, something wrong. Something is wrong. Then you telling me that the, the word of God ain't shining on you. Now, I had them bring this chair up here for a reason. I want to have this chair face the same way as everybody else. All of us, we're facing the screen, right? And we come to worship God and we lift up our holy hands. I'm going to go old school on y'all for just for a second, right? Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid my, my burdens down. See, we, we should worship together, all singing the same song in the same way. But if we're singing these songs, but here's the thing, we should also be actively doing the same thing together. But what if I want to worship God my own way? I want to be sideways and not face everybody else doing my own thing. I think I'm worshiping God, but I'm not in accord with everybody else. I'm doing my own thing, and I'm spitting spittle, singing my song, thinking I'm doing my thing, but I'm out of order. I'm 
I'm out of order. Or if I'm facing this way, I'm yelling at the back of the church and everybody in back of me, and I'm doing my own thing. I like what Paul says to the church of Corinthians. How is it that all of you have a word? How is it that all of you have a prophecy? How is it all of you have a tongue? And he says, let everything be done, what? Decently and in order. But we live our lives the same. I just want to use that, that analogy because we go out to the world and certain individuals say, I don't need religion, meaning you doing your own thing, worshiping God in a different way that is not in accord to his word and think you good with him. Something wrong. You're doing your own mode of operation, and you're not operating in the Word of God and the will of God, which in itself is spirit and it is truth. And we have a problem going on throughout the, 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 the crescendum, throughout the body of Christ, and we're not actively doing what we're supposed to be doing, and God ain't shining on that. The gospel has appeared to all of us. What does it say in verse 12? It says, it teaches. This is how we can tell people ain't reading. <laughs> this is where it got tough for me. Right there. It teaches. Here, let's go to point one as we, we get into this. Point one says, we are saved for a reason beyond just our sin. Psalms 84 and 11, read with me. The Lord is our protector and glorious king, blessing us with kindness and honor. He does not refuse any good thing to those who do what is right. Stop right there. What kind of right? Because the world has a different concept of right. We have to do what is considered right by God. What he accepts is right. And if we don't look into the word of God, we'll start to consider our own thoughts and actions as right. God going to accept this. And it's unacceptable because we have not cross-referenced our own thoughts, thought patterns, and actions and behaviors to make sure that it's in line with the word of God. Because there's a lot of stuff going on within the world. People think they're right and they're wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Wrong. And wrong some more. <laughs> Ezekiel 33 and 11, read with me. As surely as I live, says the sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of wicked people. I only want them to turn from their wicked ways so they can live. Turn, turn from your wickedness, O people of Israel. Why should you die? Ooh wee. Ooh wee. Sovereign Lord. Last time I preached, I talked about this word that capital L, capital O, capital R, capital E, Yahweh. In everything in which he is, he is holy in everything that he does. He is sovereign. He is all-powerful. He is all of those things. And this is the Lord talking to the people of Israel, the nation of Israel who got beyond themselves, wanting to do their own thing. The first uh, portion of Scripture I read is our posture and our attitude that we ought to have towards God. This particular scripture is, is God's posture and attitude he has towards mankind. And he's telling us, I'm the Lord. You got to be right by me. And he's given them an opportunity out of his grace even then to turn from their wickedness. And it's a lot of individuals in this world want to do their own thing but don't want to turn from their wickedness. And he's telling them, why should you die when I'm giving you a chance? And the Word is teaching us this, teaches. But here's, here's this, this, this awesome thing that goes along with this teaching, and this is going to help us. Here's what the word teach means, to train, to train. There's a mentor of mine that, that really has helped me along this 18, going on 19 years of preaching. 
and oftentimes I go see him from time to time. His name is Dr. Raymond L. Santee. He was one of my first Sunday school teachers. He pastors his own church down in L.A. right now. And one of the things that he would tell me early on, he would always tell me, rely on your training. Rely on your training. Rely on your training. He said, no matter how hard it gets for you as a preacher, you rely on your training. The same thing goes for all of us as those who walk and are supposed to follow the teachings of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Rely on your training. Teaching. But here's where it gets crucial with this whole concept of training and teaching. It means to train as a child to correct. Strict training and discipline to educate and to chastise. See, we live, in, we live in a world and an environment we don't want it hard. We don't want it tough. When I, was in, when I joined the United States Marine Corps and went to boot camp, every day was tough. Every day was tough. It sucked. But guess what? On that day I graduated, I was proud to be called a Marine. All the hard training meant something. There's a purpose behind God's word. He's appearing in shining light and put some heat on us sometimes to get us in the right place to have the correct posture before him that we are able to grow in a way that's conducive with the almighty God that we show his character and his nature and that once we get to him, we won't have to do, do any more of those hard things. But while we're down here, some of the things we learn are going to be tough. We don't want the tough stuff sometimes. But in order for us to grow properly and to mature in Christ, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Point two, it says it's okay to say no to yourself and follow Jesus. It's okay to say no. It's okay to say no. Now, I just got to talking about the training as a child. Sometimes I just got to talk to myself like I'm a child. You got to come to a child's level, right? You know you're wrong, Ricky. <laughs> or I'll, I'll do this. Like my mother, when she was trying to get my attention. See, I had this superpower ever since I was a little kid. It's called selective hearing. <laughs> it's a superpower. And I think my mother told my wife my secret about the selective hearing, how to be kryptonite to me by saying my entire name that's on my birth certificate. So when my mother wanted to get my attention, she would say, Richard Bernard Owens. So when my wife trying to get my attention when I'm using my superpower, she says, Richard Bernard Owens. But I have to talk to myself sometimes, Richard Bernard Owens, to get my attention. And I may have to tell myself no and deny what this flesh wants, that I'm disciplining myself. That I got to talk to myself like a child sometimes. Ricky, Richard Bernard Orange, you ain't right. You better get yourself together, partner. And we have to do that sometimes to train ourselves and go to the Word of God and see what it says. Because guess what? If you don't discipline yourself, God will. God will discipline. It ain't going to be fun. Here's what, what Matthew 16, 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. I don't know about you, but uh, when Jesus carried that cross, it seemed a little painful. When we carry the things of God, it's going to be painful. When we carry the heaviness of some of the things that God has for us, it's not going to feel good. And we have far too many Christians that think that when things get tough, God ain't training you. When things get tough, we're carrying the burdens of life that is not going to be exactly what we want, how we want to do it, because we want to walk in our own mode of operation. But when God is training us, making us, uh, I'm not going to use soldiers. When he's making us spiritual marines, you're going to go through some basic training. You're going to have to do some stuff. We got a, a former drill instructor here. I wouldn't say former, but he's re retired. <laughs> and every time, time I see him, I, I just picture him with that smoky on. No smile. And up in somebody's face pointing his whole hand like this. They didn't never point with a finger. They pointed like this. 
calling you all kind of names and stuff. But sometimes God is telling, boy, you you need to get it together. Bend. Every Marine know what I mean when I say bend. When we had to do bends and thrusts, up and down, up and down, until you just turn and all kind of colors can't breathe. And they tell you to bend some more. And then you sit there like, like you're going to die. And they say, push-ups. You got to do them tell you about to die. You sit-ups and do them tell you about to die. And leg lifts and tell you about to die. Sometimes doing the right things, it feel like you're going to die. And you wonder why Christ is allowing all these things to happen. But at the end of the day, he is just getting you spiritually fit for the kingdom. And we think of that certain things that happen. Why is he treating me this way? Why is he allowing these things to come up against me? There's certain things you won't learn unless it's come the hard way. Even when, while I was in college, my instructors, all the homework we had to do, even in seminary, I'm not up 2, 3 o'clock in the morning writing papers and typing and falling asleep at the desk. It was time like, man, this is, this is getting redundant. I just don't want to, I got to be at, clock, at, at, at work on the clock by 6 o'clock and it's 3 o'clock. Putting in work, burning that midnight oil. And God wants us to, at times to burn some midnight oil with him. And we have to be willing to do it, but it's okay to say no to yourself sometimes. Say no. It means to reject or deny. Some awesome, awesome stuff when we look at God's Word. But here's the thing, again, pointing back to that verse 13, which is not on uh, our, our layout, it tells us while awaiting. You're going through all this stuff while you're waiting. Waiting on Jesus to come. We still put in work. We're still doing all things that are necessary, though it may be tough at times. But just like Pastor Max pointed out last week, they looking up, waiting on Jesus. It's some stuff we're supposed to be doing while we're waiting. Plenty of things we're supposed to be doing every day. When we look at the, uh, the things in which we are waiting on and things we should be doing, this come, brings us to uh, three. It says, Jesus died for our sin that we would live in his righteousness. How and why and what we should be doing. One thing we should be doing, live sensible, upright, and godly lives. Now, we think we're doing something because we come here to church. You know, I'm so involved in the church. I'm on the usher board. Oh, oh wait, wait, but wait a minute. Oh, you know, I'm a preacher. I ain't off the hook. Oh, I'm on the camera. Oh, at least I show up every week. And we think we doing something. We ain't did much of nothing. But are we living sensible lives? Here's that thing, that what sensible means. It means to live a moderate life, keeping your life in check. Reflecting the radical balance of the new birth within. By faith from the Lord. In direct connection to your faith. What's in here? This is what we should be doing. It's being safe-minded, knowing your boundaries and your limitations. We got to be able to stop at a certain point and don't go, don't go beyond that. That's living a sensible life. Let's look at living upright. Upright or righteously, a life that's approved by God, not by the world. Because there's a lot of people living a certain life and lifestyle and think God okay with it. God is not okay with everything. Our God is holy. He called us to be holy. And that word holy is being separate from the world, different. Are we living a different way than the world and what they think is right? Because we're bringing a lot of things within the body of Christ and think that it's okay and it ain't by the will of God and it don't sit right with him. But at some point in time, we got to call it what it is. Sin is sin. We got to call it what it is. And there's some repercussions and some consequences to sin. Godly lives. Here's what it is. This is where it's in inward piety where we are totally devoted to God. Starts on the inside. Are we devoted 
So, God, we got to ask ourselves that question sometimes. Am I devoted to God? Do I have a life that's totally disciplined in a way that's conducive to who he is in his nature? Am I looking more like Jesus or am I looking more like Ricky used to be? Am I looking that way? Do people still see Ricky, hardhead Ricky, as his mama had to call his full name to get his attention? Or do they see Jesus, the light that shines, the epiphany? Do they see that? Here's the thing. When all of that, those three things happen, it should be with a purpose that reflects material. Spiritual maturity. Are you a grown up? Or are you still like little Ricky? Am I acting grown in Christ or immature like little Ricky? Am I maturing along the way? And I'm taking those lessons that I've learned, even the hard ones, that I'm able to live up to what it is that God has called me, commanded me, and created me to be. Are we asking ourselves those kind of questions from time to time? Am I doing that? Am I living with a purpose that reflects spiritual maturity? But how often should I do it? When should I do it? Now. Now, it says in this present age, right? Right now. Here's the thing. All you got is today. Yesterday's gone. Tomorrow ain't here yet. All we ever have is right now and today. What are you doing today? That's all you got. Yesterday is gone. What I did yesterday is done, but what am I doing right now? Or am I stuck in an immature state like I was yesterday? Or am I maturing? Am I working with purpose and conviction and being devout and totally committed to the work and will of God that he's placed before me and I'm doing what's necessary for him to know and approve of and be satisfied with, not what I'm satisfied with. Because if Ricky was, 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 was within himself, I'd have been satisfied with my walk a long time ago. But every time I look into this book, I find myself unsatisfied. Unsatisfied. And I want to do something different that I should be working on what it is that God has for me to do right now in this present age. Last one, number four. And this deals with uh, verse 14. Living right for Christ should not feel like a burden. How many of us have heard loved ones say, man, this stuff, that's just too hard to live by? My father told me that. It's hard. You're making it hard because you're being disobedient. You're making it hard because you're being rebellious. You're making it hard because you want to do things and worship God your way. You're making it hard because you want to approach God and posture before God and have an attitude that's of your own nature, and it does not reflect the nature and character of God. And we have to check ourselves from time to time to see where I'm at and how I'm living. How is Ricky living at today? Am I living in a way that's conducive to the Lord in which I serve and it don't feel like a burden? I don't know about you, but there's something that God has placed within my heart where I just want to. I want to serve him. I want to do well in knowing that he's satisfied with the effort I'm putting forward. But here's what, what we have to know and understand. My effort may not equal yours, but it's wholehearted. I don't have to be better than anybody else but what God allows me to be and grow in. And that goes for each and every. Don't compare your walk with nobody else's. Just keep walking. 
keep walking. Do your best always today, but make sure you're doing your best. Do your best. That's one thing I had to, I had to learn along the way, trying to compare myself to other people, other deacons and other fathers and other preachers and, and all this stuff. And I, well, guess what? I was falling short every time. But the minute I surrendered my life over to God, I surpassed them all. But I had to surrender. I was looking at the wrong men. I was supposed to be looking at Jesus. And the Scripture says what? That we would take up our cross and follow him. We got to follow Jesus Christ and look at what he has done. And guess what? You still start maturing and growing. You'll start to mature and, and, and other people will notice. And it feels good to do right by God. It feels good, y'all. It really does. It really feels good to do right by God. You just get the warm fuzzies, Jesus. That felt good. Jesus, you feel good in me. This is what it felt like? Like, wait, wait a minute. Holy Spirit. I like the way that feel. I want to do it some more. I'll give my child two french fries this time. He, and when I told him no last week, my wife know how I feel about food. It's hard for me sometimes. To go to dinner? No, you got a menu. You order what you want, and I order what I want. It's my plate. So if y'all ever see me give my wife some food off my plate, that's the Holy Spirit working. <laughs> Let's read Titus 2.14 together. It says, Who gave himself for us to redeem us from every lawless deed and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, eager for good deeds. We got to remember what Jesus did for us. What does it say at the beginning of that verse? It says, who gave himself for us to redeem. This is part of the motivation why I want to do good by God. Because within himself, that God loved us so much that he sent his son to get us out of a situation and a circumstance we couldn't get ourselves out of. I didn't have enough money to buy myself up out of sin. I didn't have enough good sense to think my way up out of sin. I didn't have enough love or loved ones to get me up out of what I couldn't get myself up out of. But it's the God Almighty who sent his son, who gave his own blood on Calvary for all of us to buy us back from and out of what sin was doing to us, to put us in a right relationship with God. Here's the thing. It says that what? From every lawless deed, Ricky needed to be bought out of that nonsense he was doing. Ricky needed to be bought back and bought out of the lawlessness in which I was performing and the consequences and the things that came with it. God sent his son, what? To purify for himself. Guess what? The blood didn't just buy me, but it purified me. Here's the thing for all of us. Know what Jesus did for you. He purified us. Here's the, the concept of purification and being holy because we want to cheat, treat Jesus like we're his girlfriend and not his bride. We are the bride of Christ, not his girlfriend. We got a lot of people that want to treat Jesus like you his girlfriend. There is no dedication to Jesus if you're acting like you his girlfriend. But when you are a wife to a man, there is something. You made a vow and a commitment to your husband. Have you made a vow and a commitment to God? Or are you doing your own thing and want to come to him in, in a way that you want to? Because Jesus is telling us in his word that he purified us to himself, a people of his own possession. Guess what, ladies? If you're a girlfriend, you don't belong to him. That ain't your man. And that ain't your woman. I don't care what you call it. It's not your man. You made no real commitment. But Jesus is telling us in his word, we belong to him. We are his, his possession. And guess what? When I treat my wife right, she's eager to do good things for me. When I treat her right. 
eager. Other translations say zealous or enthusiastic, where you want to do something for that person that does something. Y'all just want to do something? Are you eager to do something for Jesus? Are you eager to treat other people right because of what God has done for you and redeemed you and purified you and brought you out of sin and shame, washed you with his blood, and yet God sees you in a different way that we are justified by our faith. He no longer sees us as sinners but his children, and we have a relationship with him. Now, we're still growing. We're going to make some mistakes along the way. But guess what? God, the reason why he chastises us is because he loves us. He loves us. But just know what Jesus has done for you and be eager, be enthusiastic, have, be zealous for good deeds. Here's this thing. I, I, I want to just that the good deeds. I'm going to deal with that and I'll be, I'll be done. Good deeds. Just because you do something good don't mean it comes from the heart. Because this word has researched it, means it has to start from the inner man. An inward reality that becomes an outward reality. You got to have it in you to do good. You can give somebody $5 and be hateful and spiteful at the same time. But you can have true compassion and grace in giving someone $5. It's, it's the intent behind what you're doing. It's not a burden to serve Jesus. It's the intent. It's the goodness and the labor and the things in which you do for the body of Christ to be better. I love doing what I do on every level. I love getting with my folks, with my peoples, with an S. I love getting with church, family, and just being able to share, to minister, hang out with laugh and talk about Jesus all day. If I didn't have to work, y'all, I'd talk about Jesus all day long, every day. <laughs> every day. Yeah. Ministering to somebody. Yeah. So that's, that's, this is what we need. It, it has to be our mode of operation. This is what God wants us to do, and I'll leave it there. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Father, we thank you for your word, oh God. I ask that it will go forth and never come back void, oh God. I ask that, that hearts and minds would be touched uh, with what has been said in Titus 2, 11 through 14, oh God. Bless us, keep us, hold us in your care with your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. With all that being said, I don't know if everyone is saved here. But I just got through talking about what Jesus has done for us in redeeming us with his blood. We can't come to God on our own terms. We have to come to God through faith in Jesus Christ. It is that faith that justifies us through the works of God's grace and giving that very free gift, a gift that you could not buy, a gift that you cannot pay for, a gift that you cannot even beg for. You, all you got to do is believe and receive it. There may be someone here who does not know Jesus as their own personal Savior. And if you will come to serve the same Jesus as the rest of us, know that you will be purified. And God will create a heart in you where you, where you will be eager to do good works. That you will accept his teachings, though they may be tough sometimes. But you will mature in a way that all will know that you are a different man, woman, or child. This Jesus in which I believe and I implore you to accept him as your personal Savior. If you want to make Jesus your Savior, all you have to do is raise your hand. You don't have to come forward. Do we have one? Everybody saved, huh? Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. At this time, Bishop will be coming forth as he will uh, have communion with all of us. I'm not sure if he's ready to come back there right now, but we will be having communion and then dismissal. Amen.
As we know, this is a very special time. Uh, if there's anyone that does not have their communion, we'll get the ushers to go ahead and bring you one if you don't have one. But as we know, on that very, very solemn night in the upper room when Christ had the 12 disciples with them, he brought them around and began to speak to them, to let them know what was going to be happening to him. And on that night, Jesus tells them the representation and some, the symbolic meaning behind what we call communion. And he lets them know this is the blood that will be shed for many. He says, do this in remembrance of me. Then he says, in the same manner, they took the bread and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This is something that has been passed down that we all participate in. And recognizing what Jesus has done for each of us. have your, your bread. Let us eat, representing God's broken body through Jesus Christ. And the wine. Amen. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross, and I know it was the blood. about that blood, there's still some things in which we have the privilege and responsibility of doing. The church does not operate on zero. But guess what? This is part of our worship and service as well in giving. And you know how you can give? You can go online, which is the way I like to do it. And we also have the boxes that we can put our envelopes in as well. Amen. 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 I hope we've all gotten some out of today's sermon. Uh, that we are blessed, and guess what? What is your mode of operation? Amen? And I that we're already all standing. Well, Father, we thank you again for today's worship hour, ago. oh God. We ask that you would bless us and keep us in your care, that you would never leave us nor forsake us. Now, it's by the love of God, by the, in the uh, grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may it rest will abide with us henceforth now and forevermore. And let us all say, amen. You guys have a great week now. God bless you.